a few weeks ago, you, you, you go to Vanderbilt, and the coaches are imploring you to shoot more and shoot more. And you have you know ten points in the first half, you mm-hmm. have fourteen for the game. Come back home, you have twenty one in the second half. Those were both losses, but I said at the time on uh, that Sunday night on TV to Josiah, I thought you could really take positives out of that if you're if you're Rick Barnes because all of a sudden you started to get confidence. Mm. Was it just simply going back to the Middle Tennessee area and it was just like oh it's like the state tournament again and <laughs> and all of a sudden the ball starts going in and you're like wait a minute. I mean, that could have been it, but I think really it's just, uh, you know, Coach Barnes, you know, that's why he brought me here was to score. And uh, I think a couple practices before the Vanderbilt game, he pulled me to the side and it was just like, you know, this is why we brought you here. Uh, stop being, stop passing up open looks and uh, just go out there and play, play your game. So, like I said, he, he just pulled me to the side and told me that. And like I said, ever, ever since then, it's been kind of chipping away at. So you look at, Kind of where you were early in the year, you had the, and these weren't even real games. They were the scrimmages with Michigan mm. State and Gonzaga, you, especially that Gonzaga when you put up twenty-seven. Mm. What happened there between when you started to get the confidence back and, and and shooting the ball more and and early in the year? Was it just kind of like you know you're new to the new to the scene? You didn't want it to you know you don't want to be selfish type stuff. I think it was just uh, obviously I, I started a different role. I started playing more point guard. Um, and I was kind of just, uh, you know, facilitating first and trying to just run the offense. Uh, like I said, I think that that kind of played a role in it. And I think really just, uh, you know, every sometimes I was just really passive uh, when I shouldn't have been. I took should have took shots when I was open. And like I said, uh, Coach Barnes pulled me to the side and just told me to just go out there and play and just d- do me. So what about your 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 best friends, your high school um, classmates and teammates. How, how many of them have reached out to you? You know throughout this season whether it be for encouragement or just to kind of see how you're doing or to say hey we're coming to watch you play how much yeah. do you hear that yeah i mean i still uh, i still talk to one of my best friends every day um and we we play xbox occasionally and like i said we i actually went and seen him a couple of weeks ago and uh like i said but it's it's nice just having that support system and still having them around to talk to here and there and uh I said one of my best friends. He actually comes to mostly the, all the home games, so it's, it's good to have that support. Was it easier to transition here because there was so many veterans on this team? Santi, Urosh, Josiah. I mean, you know what I mean. Like it wasn't like you were coming in here with a bunch of young pups. I mm-hmm. mean, there were older guys here. Mm-hmm. Was it? Did that make the transition easier because there were guys your age? Yeah, I, I think I actually think so. Uh, just like I said, is we got a very mature team, and there's the culture here uh, at Tennessee is so strong and so connected. Um, like I say, I thought the transition was really easy from that standpoint. Point, uh, just like I said, just a bunch of mature guys, and everyone's for each other. So I think that's really what uh, drew me in here. You go back to that second half of that Missouri game. You hit five threes, twenty-one points. Mm. Did was was that the the hottest you've been since when? Uh, I mean, probably probably since the Gonzaga game. I mean, like I said, I knew coming out in the half of that game, obviously we needed a spark because uh, we was down at half against Missouri. So. Um, I knew I knew we needed a spark some way, and like I said, I just got some shots to go in. So, how many shots do you think you put up in a given off season? Whether it be at Indiana State here, I mean, you know, what I mean, like Jalen Hyatt was talking about how he caught like fifteen thousand balls on the jug machines. Mm. How many how many how many shots you putting up in in, in a given off season? I mean, it's that's tough. I mean, sometimes you I mean sometimes you do a thousand a day. I mean, if you do that. You know, six, seven times a week. I mean, that's the number right there. Yeah. You do that a whole off season. You know, it's, I mean, <laughs> the number adds up. So I don't really keep track. Um, but uh, if if you're in a funk and you're and the ball's not going in, mm-hmm. do you just keep shooting to shoot your way out, or do you pause? Let's take a break, clear my mind, then come back to it. Well, it, 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 I mean, I know you could do either one, but is there a preference for Tyree Key? Uh, I think I think my preference is just kind of just. You know, kind of keep the volume going and just not really thinking and stop thinking about it and just keep kind of keep shooting it. Um, that's kind of my preference. Like when I'm working out, uh, so I'll tell to my rebounder just keep passing it like faster. So that way I'll get the shots up. So I don't have to think about it as much. Do you go back and watch film to see you know as far as like elbow like te- technical stuff? Or uh, I used to. I used to did uh, when I had my shoulder injury. I used to would do that type of stuff, but I kind of got away from that and just kind of just stopped thinking. And just go out there. And just shoot and just have fun. When you I always joke that you look like John Starks and you look <laughs> like you should have played in like the eighties and nineties. Um when you 
when you watched players growing up, and I know you're not that old, but at the same time, I mean, like, did was there one or two players that you watched growing up, or you're like, you know, I, that I really want to, you know, model my game after that person. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I think some of my favorite players, uh, Carmelo Anthony, because uh, just because he's got the good mid range game, I always liked that. Um, I really liked watching John Wall growing up uh, when he was at Kentucky. Um, he's kind of a bigger built guard and just fast. Um, but uh, for mostly part, I just kind of just I don't really model my game after no specific player or anything. I just kind of you know do what I, I can know my body can do and just you know, like I said, I'm not the most athletic guy out there, but I'm kind of a bigger guard, so I kind of use my physicality in different ways. When you're with your teammates or your friends. And you're talking about the NBA. What do you guys talk about? Uh, I don't even mean like trying to get there. I'm just talking about like today's NBA, favorite teams, favorite players. Uh, Dis- I mean, uh, not arguments, but like disagreements about who the best player is, that type of stuff. Yeah, I mean, obviously the the biggest one is obviously the Michael Jordan, LeBron. Those are, those, those arguments always kind of get sparked up. Anyway. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> who are you going uh, with? I mean, I think, uh, like I said, it's two different eras, but – I mean, I think LeBron now, just because he's got the all-time scoring record and just how long he's been able to produce and obviously still getting better at this age and still putting up the numbers he is. I mean, it's just it's like it's one of a kind. When you, uh, when you look at Coach Barnes and his track record of getting players developed, whether it's changing Kevin Punter's shot or changing Josiah's shot or, you know, getting someone who is – you know, struggling confidence wise and getting them to play more confidently. What do you admire the most, and how much has he helped you? Um, I think just uh, like I said, just how he how he kind of controls the team and how he talks to the guys. Um, you know, I I think like I said that one day he pulled me to the side and just told me just to be me, just go out there and just do what I do, and then he just wanted me to score. Um, so I did just, you feel differently as soon as he said that? I did actually. I mean, I, I think it kind of brought a level of um, I mean, I've always had confidence, obviously, but it kind of, you know, kind it's of lifts different. you. Yeah, it's kind of different. Take the um, shackles off. Yeah, it's kind of something like that. Just kind of knowing that he said that, like he needs me, he wants me to do me and just go out there and just do what I do best. And I think that that really helped me. So, Coach. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video here at VolQuest on YouTube, the leading source of University of Tennessee football, basketball, and recruiting. Be sure to check out our latest video right here and the, our latest live show right above it. All that at VolQuest.com and VolQuest on YouTube.